We now know that when two objects collide, the, the total linear momentum of the system stays constant as long as there are no external forces such as friction. So we can say that the total linear momentum of an isolated system remains constant. Now there are two types of collisions that we can have. We could have elastic collisions and inelastic collisions. Let's take a look at a, at a video that can help us differentiate between the two. So watch how this ball collides with this wall and notice if its velocity changes much. Notice how the velocity did not change that much. Now that what you just saw would be an elastic collision. Think of an elastic band. So you've got an object that travels towards a wall and then comes back at pretty much, let's say it comes back at the exact same speed. That is called elastic. Now have a look at the following collision, which will show us a totally different scenario. So in the next clip, we're going to see two cars that are going to collide. And if it was a perfectly elastic world, the two cars would simply bounce off from each other, just like two snooker balls. However, as we will see, this is going to be a inelastic collision, and so the two cars are not going to simply bounce off from one another. Let's take a look. So notice how the two cars are not moving apart. And so by now you should have a very good idea of what elastic means and inelastic. With elastic, the objects maintain their energy. So if they initially hit the wall at 5 meters per second, they will bounce off at 5 meters per second. But when we saw the two cars, we see that the velocities change, and that is called inelastic. Okay, Kevin, so how are we actually going to calculate this in a question? Well, what we're going to do is the following. You would need to take the two objects and work out how much energy they both have just before the collision. Energy, now this is very important, energy is a scalar. Kevin, what does scalar mean? That's something we probably heard like two years ago and we don't actually know what scalar and vector means. I understand. But what it means is something that does not have direction. So you don't have to choose a direction with energy. You simply work out the total energy of the system. So let's go total energy before. So what type of energy do these cars have anyway? Well, what do we call the type of energy due to speed? Well, that's kinetic energy. Well done if you remember that. And the formula for kinetic energy is a half mv squared. Now, I've seen a lot of students forget the square. Now, this formula is given to you on the formula sheet. So let's take the first object. That's going to be a half times by its mass, which is a thousand, times by its velocity, which is 10 squared. You're then going to say plus. We're not going to worry about direction for, for energy. And you're going to say half times by the second object's mass, which is 1,200, times by its velocity, which is 8 squared. You can then type that in on the calculator. And that's going to give you 88,400. Now, what is energy measured in? Well, think of a food item in your fridge. It's measured in joules. We don't say left, we don't say right, because it is a scalar. This is just a warning that the next scene contains adult content. Viewer discretion is advised. So I do apologize for any sensitive viewers out there. However, I can confirm that no one was harmed during the shooting of this clip. So what we can see now is that after the collision has taken place. Now, what I want you to imagine is immediately after the two cars collided, okay? So like maybe a split second before this image that we can see here, the white car and this other silvery colored car, they would still have a little bit of velocity, right? They wouldn't just immediately become zero. So let's say that the white car was then traveling at about two meters per second to the right, because obviously while it's still busy crumpling, the, the, the plastic body parts of the car, while they're busy crumpling up, the cars are still moving in their original direction. And let's say that the silver car is then moving at one meters per second. Let's go calculate the energy of the system at that point. So I'm going to call this energy final. And that's just going to be equal to a half times the first one's mass, a thousand, times by the velocity of the white car then, which is two plus 
half times the other car, which is 1,200, times by its velocity, which is 1. You can then go type all of this on the calculator, and you end up with 2,600 joules. So, the total system had 88,400 joules before the collision, 2,600 joules after the collision. Energy has been lost. Where did it go? Well, some of the energy gets absorbed or gets released in the form of sound, because if we had to watch this, we would definitely hear about it. And then also a lot of energy gets used up in deforming the car, okay? I don't know about you, but if you had to try to deform a car like that, you'd have to use quite a lot of energy. So that energy gets released. And so what we can say is that because the energy before and the energy after is not the same, this is a inelastic collision. If these two numbers over here and over here were the same, then it would be elastic. And what would happen is the two cars would have bumped into each other. They would have then moved apart at the exact same speed that they hit each other with, and there would be absolutely no sound, and there would be absolutely no deformities on their cars. And so in real life, it is almost impossible to have an elastic collision. The closest one that we can come up with is a snooker ball, or maybe you call it pool. You know the game where you use those cue sticks and you've got to hit the, the balls and you've got to try sink the number eight at the end? Well, when playing that, when those balls bump into each other, that is almost elastic. But we know that it's not perfectly elastic because obviously we can hear the balls, and so some of the energy gets released in the form of sound. But what we don't see is the balls getting deformed. Kevin, can the elastic, can the energy of the system ever increase? Yes, it can. Think of a cannon that shoots a bullet. In the beginning, before the, the shot, before the shooting takes place, there is no energy in the system. After you shoot the ball, the, the cannon ball would move off, let's say, to the right, and then the, the cannon itself would move to the left. And so they would now have velocity, and so the system's kinetic energy would actually increase. The definition of that is an explosion. And so yes, in summary, that is what a elastic versus inelastic means. Thanks for watching.